welcome to the Tipperary Camogie Podcast with me, your host, Joe Scully. And on today's episode, we have a very special guest from the Burgess Dora Club, the 2024 vice captain on Tipperary Camogie team, a winner of eight count senior county championships, a winner of an All Ireland minor under 16 championship with Tipperary in the past, a winner of four Ashburn Cups, and a winner of the 2018 Tip of M Club Camogie Player of the Year. It's Quiva Matter. Quiva, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. A very impressive list of achievements there for you. So, you so we start off, I suppose, when you're back in your younger days, when you were young, was it always Kamogi that you always wanted to play like, or was it always the dream, like maybe to play for Tipperary when you got older? Um, yeah, I suppose it was. I, I think I actually started uh, like playing Kamogi as in with the club quite late. I think I was like eight, nine or 10 years old, but I would have been, um, I would have been playing with like my family, with dad, my cousins when I was much, much younger, like from, I'd say as soon as I could walk, I, I, I had a hurry in my hand. So I knew it was always something I enjoyed um, but I didn't really have any concept of what it was like playing with with everyone else until I joined the the club um, and like kind of just ran with it from there, to be honest, completely fell in love with it, gave me something to be doing. It was competitive. It was, you know, you know high energy. Um, and I, I really enjoyed, <clears throat> I suppose, the practicing of it, the continuation of it, having to go every week, all of those kind of things. So as I got older, I just, I suppose I never really wanted to to stop doing it. Um, it was something I just really enjoyed spending my time doing. I made a lot of friends doing it, which was, you know, made it easier to keep going, I suppose, because I was happy enough to be going and spending time with those people. Um, and obviously, if you're playing it right and playing it at that at that level and knowing that it's something that you could potentially be hoping to achieve, then yeah, naturally, I'd I'd always have wanted to to play at the top level, whatever that would be, which would have been playing for, for Tipperary, I suppose, on the senior team. Yeah. And when you were growing up, who would have been the biggest influences on your career when you were younger? Oh, without a doubt, my parents. Like, one, 100% my parents. My parents were at every single training session, every single challenge match, every single championship match, yeah. everything that we that both me and my sisters ever played they were there. They carted us around from one place to the next, constantly supporting us um, in it. Like no place was too far for training. No match was too far away uh, and nothing was ever a problem. They gave so much time up with us trying to to play this game. <laughs> um, and, and so I, I would have to say, yeah, with, without a doubt, it's it's them. And I'm very, very grateful to them that they that they did that right it's it's something i'm i'm very very glad that they that they did for me yeah very good so obviously you grew up you grew up to be like playing for tiberi uh, underage and all the way up and you won a few you won like the under 16 all ireland and the minor all ireland and then obviously the same year you, you, you ever was there ever a time where you realized that yeah i am this is going to be something I can do and I will be playing for Tipperary or is that something that ever crossed your mind like where you thought yeah I'm good enough now to be did you realise you're better than maybe other people around you like or was that something that crossed your mind much? I knew I was always like I, I knew I was always competitive um, and <laughs> I knew that when I wanted like when I go and do anything I kind of pretty much go and do it to the best that I that I can do right I'm I, I'm 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 the oldest child as well, which probably plays into that. So I I you know I I'm quite competitive and like to go and do things properly, no matter what it is. Um, so I I definitely would have been aware that I was competing at the top level, probably in whatever age group I was in, all of the time, and enjoyed that that was happening. I probably saw a lot of success as well when I was quite young, as in we would have moved up um the grades underage and, and things like that i would have played like on those under 16a and and minor teams um and I, I i i enjoyed being in that space where it was something that people took really really seriously uh and i enjoyed winning who doesn't enjoy winning so yeah. if you if you know that that's something that you are capable of probably achieving then yeah 
like I would have always wanted to to be playing for for Tipperary. I was lucky enough in the club that I was in as well. There was a lot of older girls around me who had been there and done that right had won all Ireland's with Tipperary and, and done things like that and I was training with these people you know three or four times a week so naturally I, I wanted to to be like them you know and I'm, I'm I'm very glad that I was that I got the chance to be with them when I when I was growing up I suppose. Yeah, I suppose the likes you talked there like the likes of Eamon McDonald I suppose you know mm. winning the five, you saw playing Training and playing with them from a young age would have definitely helped with those and brought you on a lot as well, wouldn't it? One hundred percent. Like I got exposure to what it was like to play at the highest level from a very young young age. So I knew, I suppose, like I kind of had a fair idea of the commitment that was involved, the effort that was involved, all of the things that you had to do outside of the training field to be able to play at at that level. The time that they put into it. Um, and because I suppose I was exposed to that and because we we did see a lot of success, um, it was it was all so positive. I have nothing but positive memories of that. So, um, yeah, it, it was, as I said, I'm, I'm really, really lucky that I think I, I was exposed to that straight away. And I had the support right from from my parents and from my family to, to go and be involved in in it um, and to put the time in it as well and when i saw what could what could be possible um yeah it was it was naturally something i wasn't ever going to just just throw away there wasn't anything else that i kind of deviated towards and thought it was worth pursuing instead i i always mm. kind of seemed that this was something that i could give a go at if i if i really wanted to as you mentioned there before i went to bird just or a club like that's the club your way and like so was they formed in 2009 and I suppose instant success like that year, even though you were beaten, you got all the way to the county final in your first year. And then in 2010, you went on to win the county championship. And sure then obviously 2012 came along and you ended up winning like seven championships in a row. Mm -hmm. So I suppose from very soon as you got onto the team, like you were very young, obviously, when you got on first broke onto the team, but you've known not about success mm -hmm. really from the start, like for you, like you won like eight county championships in like what, nine, ten years or something to so on the seven in a row. So how did that feel like, you know? Was it always like so you kind of just knew it was all success for you? Um, it, it was amazing. It was, it was absolutely amazing. Um, to, I, 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 there's not that many people who are lucky to say that they were able to do something like that. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great. I have such fond memories of, of playing on that team and, and being involved in that kind of environment. And it was like, it was so competitive. Um, it was really high performance and, and those girls really were, like a credit to to themselves and 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 still probably are to to be honest. So, yeah, it was it was a great environment to be in. I enjoyed every second of it. It was obviously um, an all the time thing. We were going from playing with Duhara to eventually playing with Tip to playing in school or in college. So it was a constant thing for a lot of years on the on the trot. Um, there wasn't really a lot of time out from Camogie during those those years, and obviously that's, um, you know, we we had a great time while we while we were there. So I'm I'm very grateful for for that success. Yeah, and like so when you're winning those seven in a row, like obviously there's not many defeats in there. Like for obviously, like well, mm -hmm. was every year you're coming back. Like I suppose when you. In 2012, you're winning the first one. Was there ever any notion there that you could actually go on and win the seven in a row? Or what was that? Well, there wouldn't have really been, was there? It was just win with 2012 and hope for the rest. Yeah. Like I suppose, but there was no notion as well of seven in a row at that stage, was there? No, I I don't think that anyone had any concept that something like that was was going to happen. Um, like the first one was I I was what 14, 15 years of age back then, so I have few memories of of it to. <laughs> To be honest, but uh, I know it, I, I, it was so important to that team at the time when we when we won that that first county title. And I think once we kind of got over that hurdle, because a lot of those girls had probably never done that before. And when we got over the first one, all, all that did was just give confidence to everybody that we could 
that we could do it. And we just never, we never changed what we were doing. You know, we were very committed to what was going on. It was as competitive as any intercounty team would have been at, at that time for us, you know, and most of the people playing on the team would have had exposure to some kind of intercounty um, set up anyway. So, um, yeah, it was, it was just great that we managed to, to do it. Um, but nobody, I think, would have thought that that was what was going to happen. Obviously, when you're doing something like that, it gives you a lot of confidence, right? Every time that you go out that you're capable of, of winning each game and, you know, winning each battle and all of those things. Um, so that's, I suppose, maybe some of the key to, to how we managed to, to stay up there for yeah. so long. Yeah. And now, it's obviously, look, when you win something like Sports 7 in a row, you think, it's obviously the record, is, I think, anyway, you obviously think that it's never, probably never going to be beaten. But when you look now, now with Drummond Inch, like they've got five in a mm. row and like two more. Is that something now, obviously, since you won, Drummond Inch obviously bet you in 2019 in the final and you haven't been back since then. Like obviously last year, you were beaten in the quarter final by a couple of points by um, Boris Lee. Like, so mm -hmm. you suppose you've still been competitive, but you haven't got, is that something like, you know, maybe trying to stop Drummond Inch from getting equal in your record? Is that something as a club you think about, or is it just, is it just get on with it and maybe, or is, would it be something like where you'd be thinking, yeah, we have to try to stop them, maybe be equal in our record or maybe going on to beat it or something? Um, I, I think every, like, obviously every year that we, get back together the goal is to to go all the way and and to win right and we've we've obviously not been in that position now for for several years which has been I suppose a bit of a an adjustment but we have a lot of young people um playing now who like you know at the at the time that we were successful wouldn't have been around at at all so we're going to have to go through obviously a period of of adjustment and I but I don't think that the goals ever really change right so the goal is always to get back there and win would I say that we're thinking about stopping anyone from from beating a record not necessarily no yeah. um if they get there and they achieve it fair play to them because it's a it, it's some going and it's a lot of years on the on the clock um but yeah, our goal every year is is to just to to go out there to compete, and obviously the end goal is is always to win. I mean, that's always my end goal anyway. I'm as I said, quite a competitive person, so naturally, um, I don't really like to take part in this. I think <laughs> um, I'm going to win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so like, obviously, when you're winning, trying to success the seven and you won two months of club championships in that time, which was 2016 and 2017. And obviously, look. It's hard enough to win a tip championship, so winning them once a championship is a great achievement in itself. Like, so that must have been great for you as well. Yeah, both uh, like a uh, hundred percent two bonus things that I'm really happy happened. Um, as well, we competed in Munster for many years before we we got there. Um, so to get there, the both times that we did, we were obviously delighted with. Um and like any day you go out and win a Munster final is 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 a great day, right? So I I can't really complain um about that. There's not too many who who get that opportunity either. So it was was it disappointing though that you couldn't go on maybe a win in All Ireland in that time or just it's just would that have been an extra bonus I suppose more than anything like because obviously, it, 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 I, obviously it, yeah obviously it would have been but it's it's as you said very very hard to to win one. I know we were when we were competing there was some absolutely excellent teams right in, involved you're talking about like the Milfords the Aulak Ballas of of the world who did go on to win great great things um and towards the end of it Sarsfields were starting to come to the to the fore and Schlock Neil as well of course so some absolutely excellent Camogie teams who have gone all the way and you know deservedly so um it would probably have been nice to to get there to have our day in Crow Park absolutely and I think we would definitely have thought we were capable each year that we went. Um, but unfortunately, it just didn't go our our way. So we just have to yeah. have to live with that, I suppose. Yeah, maybe you'll be back there again someday. Sure. Who knows? Hopefully, yeah, exactly. But anyway, on to your Tipperary career, I suppose, now. And look, you had success there from a young age as well, like when you won the All-Ireland under-16 and the All-Ireland minor, like, as well. So that must have been great for you as well. Like, you came on to the Tiberi team for a bit of success there. Like, how did that feel for you? Yeah, um, that was that was great. We, you know, at that time, you were kind of getting to know everyone else who you wouldn't necessarily have been playing with um, <clears throat> in your club underage. So it was uh, probably a bit of a new setup 
getting to know all of those people and to kind of learn each other, figure out who we all were and, and to come together and try and achieve something like that. Uh, again, we were highly competitive, right? So everybody was there trying to 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 win on at the end of the day. And we were lucky that we did that. I think in both finals, we were down, if I'm not mistaken, at, at halftime and ended up coming back um to win both games uh which is always an interesting way to to go and win a game and we were delighted obviously with with that uh and it was a great push on right to to it was a great push on for us to know that there was a group of us there who would probably go forward together to represent Tipperary at adult level um and probably getting the chance to do that with some of the girls who would have previously been my teammates on minor uh, would have made made the transition a, a lot easier. You know, you would have had a lot of people there who you'd have been comfortable playing with and talking to and socialising with. So that's always the plus. Yeah, you're talking about like the minor final of 2011. You were played Kilkenny in it. You said you were behind. Mm. You, you were two six to a goal down a half time. Like that was. The I think we so. Yeah. Second half. Like yeah. if you can remember what was there much said. Like what must be something some, something magic better than half time. I actually running. can't. I can't, I, I can't really remember, to be honest. I wouldn't be great for specific memories of, of things like this, and it's obviously so long ago. I don't particularly remember anything, but I'm sure there's some of the girls on that team who could tell you what or wasn't said yeah. at, at half time. Yeah. But whatever happened, we managed to turn it around. Turn it around yeah. We won it anyway, so yeah, it's, something it's, must have happened. Yeah, beating Kikini down, I suppose, would have been extra special as well for the Exactly, anyway. always, yeah. always would be. So you made your inter-county debut in, I think, it was 2012, anyway, and that must have been a special moment for you, wasn't so. it, when you were playing senior for your county, like? I, again, I, I, I have very few memories, to be honest, um, of it. It was 2012, yeah, as, as far as I know. Um, I came up onto that team, I think I was maybe in fifth year, or I don't think I was quite doing my, my leave insert, and um, when I came up onto the team, there was already some of the girls who I had previously played minor with playing with Tip, who had been that year older. Um, and I know at the time there was obviously still, still some of those girls who would have won that Munster final and, and the, 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 the couple of All-Irelands with Tipperary playing. So it was a big privilege to be able to go out um, and see what they were able to do on the field and to be able to play with with those people um, so yeah, it, I mean, any time that you get called up to do something like that for the first time is is exciting, right? When you're when you're when you're at something like that. Yeah, and I suppose, like obviously Tipperary had their golden spell. I suppose winning All Ireland at the turn of the century, but and won a month of championship in 2010, two years before you came on the panel. But I thought there wasn't really much success for you coming up along the years, like until last year when you won the Munster Championship. So I suppose it was a bit frustrating for you along the way as well, not maybe get winning silverware when all the work you would have put in and all that. Yeah, it would be in a way. I mean, as I said, at the end of the day, right, we're all we're all playing this as competitive people. We want to be we want to be winning. We're putting in a lot of time, a lot of hardship um to it. I suppose we would have probably always known that we had potential to to do something which would have kept us all coming back and back um over the years we'd had to ha we'd have had to learn a lot obviously around the adjustments that are required the game is very different to what it would have been when we all started playing camogie in our like teenage years um so there was a lot of adjustments and stuff to be made a lot to be to be learned around how we wanted to play what was required to be able to play um, but I I think we're we're definitely we're there now, right? We are we are we are there now. We understand what uh, it takes to be able to compete at that level. We've proven that we can do it, um, and it's just a case of of going out now and 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 making making those things yeah. happen. You were just um, yeah, exactly. Like you look back, I suppose we go back to last year, maybe for you, and obviously you winning the month of championship, but. You lost the All Ireland semi final to Waterford by mm. a point, like when you were like seven points up at one stage in the first half. Like, so do you look back at that with regret, like and disappointment? Like, is that something you look back at thinking maybe we should have held on? Or, like, obviously, look, Waterford are a good team and that, but like mm -hmm. when you were up by seven points, like that's something you look back on with a lot of regret, like. Uh, certainly, it was obviously disappointing, right, to, to lose that 
that day. It was a great opportunity for us to get there to the All Ireland final, and it didn't go our way. Um, I would say that we've definitely learned a lot from from that day, and uh, the things that went wrong for us on the day. Um, and it's probably something that all of us will take forward into this year and probably future years as well. None of us want to be in a situation where we feel the way that we felt after that game on on that day. Right. So, yeah, certainly it was a, a disappointment because we have, you know, real goals for, for ourselves as a team. And we, we do believe that this is something that we are seriously going to compete at. Um, so look, all we're looking for is another opportunity to to get there and to go and show what we what we can do. And look, so for going forward this year as well, I was looking to defend your monster title and obviously you'll be looking to push mm-hmm. on extra and get to the all the final and see how it goes. And for of course for yourself on an individual level, being named vice captain for the year, that must be something that you're very proud of for this year. Um. Yeah. I. I guess it's. It was certainly nice. I suppose to to be asked to have some kind of, I suppose, leadership role like like that. Um. More than happy to to take it on. I've been around long enough now. I know most of the people, um, involved. So I. Yeah. It was. It, you know. Anytime you get asked to do something like that is a is a great honor. And I have a great partner with with Karen, you know, a great leader who is more than capable of, of leading the team on any given day. Um, so happy to to work with her and with obviously all of the, the, the management and the team for the remainder of the year. Yeah. And so look, the last few years as well on the Tipperary team, you've been playing alongside your sister Kira. So that must be something mm-hmm. for your family to be very proud of, the two of you playing together on the Tipperary team. So I'll say your family are very proud of the both of you. Uh yeah, I, I would I would hope so anyway. Yeah. Um yeah, me, me and me and Kira have pretty like much played. Well, like. Yeah, we've we've pretty much played everything ever um, together. So uh, yeah, I, I like I I obviously really enjoy playing with her. We've as I said played absolutely everything ever that existed to, together. We know each other very well on the field. It's very easy for us to work together. So yeah, all I I would hope that they're proud of us anyway. Yeah. And I suppose we touch when you're in college. I suppose at University of Limerick. And the Ashburn Cup, you won a few, well, the four of them you won all together with University of Limerick. You came on them and they were successful. Them, yeah. So that's more successful. So it seems to be everywhere you go, there's seen success, seems to follow. So <laughs> either you're a lucky omen or you're just, you're good anyway. Obviously, some sort of. But, so what was that like to play in them? Like for. Uh, loved every, every second of it. Yeah, I loved so absolutely every second of it. You're going to be from all over the country as well, like in that. So you're going it, to exactly. Yeah. It was it was brilliant. Um, I'm so happy that I was there at the time that I was there, and I was a part of that team who who existed. Um, we had such a great time. It was so much fun, so interesting to be able to play with people who you don't get to play with every day. To be able to play with people who are competing against every year playing um for other counties and things um it was it was yeah it was it was a real good buzz to to be there we had a great time we really enjoyed each other's company um and again we were you know a a very kind of tight-knit team very happy to to compete at whatever level and do whatever was required to be able to get there we had some very tough challenges uh over those kind of I was there five years. Yeah, we had some very tough challenges against some excellent other colleges teams, um, and it was yeah, it was it was a really really I suppose good exposure for me um, with regards to a high kind of performing environment where if people kind of glue and stick together and become really close as a as a team and as friends, um, you can see what you can achieve on the on the field. So yeah, I have again nothing but good memories of of that time. Yeah, that's great. So there's something you touched on actually earlier on. It's like, you know, I said when you were over two years, like you're between club, college, intercounty, and like all the stuff, it's a lot of work to do. And like, I suppose there's a lot of training involved and there's a lot of games played. There's just something to ask you about how you feel about that, the workload, I suppose, involved now, especially this these days. Because it seems to be an awful yeah. lot of workload, like, and a lot of pressure. And just wondering how you felt about it, like, because there's a chat, you know, a burnout maybe, and then maybe going forward in your life, you know, maybe risk of serious injuries to yourself. And as well as it's happened, like, you know, players, yeah. maybe just overdoing it, like, or something. I just wondering your opinion and all that. Um, yeah, it's it's changed a lot over the 
the years that I've I've been playing I would have been when I was younger playing I would have been very carefree about it like I just really enjoyed playing really enjoyed being there being involved um and you were able to I suppose just turn up and and participate um with kind of without any worries about about anything as you kind of get older and stuff that that tends to change other things happen in your life there's other things that you have to try and prioritize so it can become quite challenging it did become very challenging for me when uh, when I, I i initially moved away from from home uh, at the time that i started working i went to dublin and i found it very difficult to juggle playing and and working and commuting and all of those things so I think I there would have been a point where I just decided I didn't I couldn't do it anymore so I did take a I think it was a I think it was three years it was either two or three years out where um I just wasn't able to to balance all of the those things mm. at once uh, and having played like I did consecutively for so many years as I said between playing for school playing for tip playing for college um it was it was a lot right it was a case where you were going for five or six years on the on the trot without really any time off so I felt like I needed to to do that um but while I was away from from the sport right I I missed the routine of it uh it gives you a great structure to your days to your life you you know you're very organized everything is um kind of planned out for you I would have I would have missed that um aspect of it and I would have I would have I suppose spent a lot of time doing other kind of exercises and and um uh things like I don't know let's say kettlebell things box size things I would have spent a lot of time do, being able to exercise in, in different ways which wasn't something that I would have been able to do while I'm playing camogie but now um it's probably now that it's more it's more time than ever that's demanded from you I'm lucky enough that I'm old enough now to be able to balance everything else in life like my personal life work all of those kind of things with Kamogi I'm able to prioritize it I work a lot from home as well now which is incredible with regards to how um, much time that gives you back uh, allows you to make to plan things throughout the day to get such sessions done at times of the day that you wouldn't normally be able to get done so it's definitely changed a lot how I've been able to deal with it I've had times where I've been really good at it times where I've struggled um and at the moment I would feel like yeah I'm, I'm probably as good at, at juggling those things as I as I ever have been but I'm old enough now to be to be able to do those things Thank, thank God, yeah. <laughs> and look, obviously, I suppose with the way the game has gone now, it's it's almost, I suppose, professional in all but name, I suppose. Do you see it ever going fully professional? Like, not just Camogie, but maybe hurling and football as well? Or is that something you see happening or would it be something you'd like to see happening at some stage in the future? I don't, I don't know if I ever see it happening. I think the, like the, at its core, it's a, it's an amateur sport right yeah. and I think that going professional would, would change a lot of things um I think it's amazing to see a lot of the opportunities that it's giving people to go and play professional sports elsewhere um which is uh, which is something that you know you would you would never have seen before and I think is is a really positive thing as long as we don't lose everyone obviously to it but it's nice to be able to see the the impact that the work that's involved can have for for people like you're you're taking people like the, the ladies footballers for example who are pretty much ready to go as professional athletes in in Australia or mm. or whatever and I think that that's it's great to to see those kind of opportunities be be given to to people um but I don't know if I would ever see it going fully professional I think that's a a long drawn out conversation with a lot of things to think about before we would make that kind of a decision. Mm. Uh, but I certainly think that, you know, it's, it's important that people are looked after um, when you're, when you're doing it right. Because at the end of the day, it, like it is a lot of time, there is a huge cost attached to all of the things that are involved in it. Um, so it's important that people are looked after and compensated for, for those things as, as well at the same time. 
Yeah, and just yes, yeah, that's true. So look, I suppose on your career, looking back on it, you've obviously had a lot of success through the years with winning stuff. So which would you say was uh, the most important, or the win that win that meant meant the most to you in your career, like the victory, you know, that made the mo meant the most to you? Uh, good question. Uh, I think. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 2013 was when we won the county final and I was actually captain that year. That was um, a great, a great honor. And I that was that was something that was very, very exciting at the at the time to be able to lead that team. Um, last year's most final success was obviously well up there as well, because as you said, I, I hadn't had a lot of success with Tipperary at, at adult level. So that was probably my my first exposure to to something like that. Um, and other than that, I think the the year that we first won our monster title um, down in care against Inishkara was also uh, a, a great day. You know, we had competed at Munster for many years without I don't even know if we had made a final before. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, yeah, that was something that was quite special as well. So, yeah, and um, what's the opposite end of the spectrum now? As that much of the success you had, there's supposed to be a few losses along the way and a few disappointments. Which, of all the losses, which one would this most disappointment and uh, biggest mm. regret like maybe you had of the, in them? Um... In the losses. That is a good, good. The last last year's All Ireland semi final loss is is well up there, um, and that's something that I definitely would like to rectify as soon as possible. Um, other than that, let me let me think. I think any of the the there's two All Ireland semi finals that kind of stick out in in my head as as games where we would look back and think, oh, if only something had happened, it would have been. We played Sarsfields of Galway. Uh, I'm not sure what year it was, but it would have been an All Ireland semi final in in um, in Offaly somewhere, um, and that was definitely a game that we were we were gunning for, um, and would have been disappointed to to come away without a loss. And I think we played Schlockneil up in Monaghan or Cavan somewhere um, again in an All Ireland semi final, and we would have gone into that game really really confident and um unfortunately that that didn't go our our way either so they stand out as kind of two days where i just remember being bitterly disappointed at the at the end of the game and that's you know not something that you get over very quickly i suppose ever yeah yeah i suppose yeah and on your career who would have been your bet the best manager you've ever played under oh um or would you be able to pick one Oh, it's that's a tough that's a tough question. You're on the spot um, there. <laughs> um, who would have been the best manager that I've ever? Um, I would say that I. I mean, I've had. A, I feel like I've had a pretty good relationship with most of the people that I've um, played under. To be honest, so that's kind of difficult to 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 choose i've i've worked with my dad an awful lot um probably not so much that recently but i have worked with my dad an awful lot and would have done a lot through those like under 16 and minor teams um i would have always really enjoyed um working with with him um i would always really enjoy working with pat kremen who's who's actually currently with us now in the in the club in terms of his coaching style uh, he really tests you with things like drills really understands the game is very wise very kind of calm cool and collected um he, he his his drills would really be things that you have to kind of think through and figure out um so i really enjoy i, I really enjoy working with with him as well um so i yeah but after that generally i i have a good relationship i would say with most of the people that i've that i've worked under so it's yeah, it's kind of a difficult one to say, one, yeah. to be honest. I suppose just obviously Camogie will take up a lot of your time between that. But outside of Camogie, what do you like to do to keep to keep yourself as well as occupied oh. or keep maybe your mind off Camogie? What would your hobbies be, I suppose? Or is there do you get more chance to do much, I suppose? Yeah, no. You're on the yeah, go I, the whole time. 
I don't know if I would be able to say I have, like, do I have many other hobbies? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Look, anything that I can do to like relax and recharge um, and get a bit of calm in my life is, is stuff that I, I enjoy. Um, like getting out, going for walks, listening to podcasts. I really enjoy um, food, obviously going for things like breakfast with my friends uh, or sitting down for the day to like cook out a couple of meals or to make some sweet treats or something like that. I, I really enjoy those kind of things. And anytime you get a chance to, I suppose, go away and, and see another part of the world, whether that's here in in Ireland or whether that's that's somewhere else, that's that's always stuff that I look forward to where I have the ability to really kind of just switch off and, and not think about about anything else, to be honest. Yeah, that's good. And I suppose we're new, coming to the end now anyway, so I won't keep too much longer. But I just asked a couple of more questions. Um, just one question. If, if you had a chance, like, from, like if there was a transfer system, just say there was available in Camogie, if you're mm. from any other county, if you could transfer one other one player from Ooh. any other county to play for Tipperary, who would you pick and why? One other uh, from county. I think I would choose Beth. I'd choose Beth Carton. Um, I have played against her and I have played with her in in UL and well, yeah. she's yeah she's just she like I mean she is she is phenomenal what she can do or right? she's a handful for absolutely anyone to to be trying to 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 mark on any given day so yeah I think I would I would take her now, until I think what will be my favorite part of all these episodes when I'm, asked, when I'm, them, I'm going to get you to pick your five best players you've played for, played with in your career, and then pick the five players, best players you've played against in your career, which I know okay. it's probably a difficult question to answer, but it, if you yeah, go from five to very... one anyway, and give a reason as to what's right there, maybe <laughs> there if you can. So we first we start off with the, I suppose we start with the five best players you've played against, start with number five. Against, okay. Yeah, against. Um, yeah. Okay, a lot of people probably make both lists, to be honest, like I've, I've played with a lot of people who you'd hate to play against. Um, <laughs> I would probably choose. I choose. I I think I choose Cot um as as someone who is very difficult to to play against. Right, the skill level that she that she has, you can do everything you physic if physically possible to to try and I don't know push her out to the sideline or do whatever, but she still managed to get, to to get the ball over the bar. So I would I would definitely choose her on that list. Um, I would choose. I would choose Beth on on that list as well for pretty much the exact same reasons. Um, you just can't be prepared enough, I think, for for what she's able to do with the with the ball. Um, I would choose. I think for my, I, I would probably choose someone like Eva Donahue in 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 Galway. I played a lot of challenge matches against her. Um, just like a ferocious, uh, athlete who just stays going and going and has a great fight. Um in her so I, I think I would choose her Um, I would choose I, in my younger younger days I think one of the, the toughest people that I I would have ever marked in the field is probably Jim O'Connor as well in in Cork Um, so I would probably put her on that list and I'd also choose another Cork person I'd, I'd pick Ashton Thompson uh, as well we've had a quite a few battles be it either it's um, us playing against Milford in club or or against Cork as well, and again, just a pure athlete like with a ferocious battle and fighting her. So, yeah, that's five people I think. Yeah, yeah five. Yeah, so that's five. So, so now we're going to the five best players you played. Fuck, wait, I yeah. saw. Um, tough as well, I say. Yes, very. And some of those people, as I said, would be on the same list. Um. Okay, so I think the the first person I have to put on that list would be Emma McDonald, right? All day, every day. Um, like I I just consider myself so lucky that I got to play with her. She was such a good leader. Um, like again, such a good athlete, such good skill level, um, and someone you could always count on. So I would I would have to put her on on that list. I'd also put another Duhara woman on that list. I'd put Tishy O'Halloran on that list. Um she's she she taught me so much about like 
competing and what's involved and just being a ferocious ferocious competitor um so i would i would definitely think that that tishy deserves a, a mention on on that list um i would choose karen i choose karen kendy the things that she's able to do again on the field like such an athlete um and probably like one of the best if not the best in the country at the mm-hmm. at the minute um I think I think I would put Mal on that list. I'd put Mal Ryan there as well. She is just calmness personified, um, like so wise, um, never seems to be under pressure. A really, really good role model for anyone who joins a team ever, uh, makes everybody so comfortable and has just years of experience that she can really drawn at at any time um and i think i think she'll kill me for doing this but i think i'm going to put kirda on that list as well purely just because we've like as i said we've played pretty much everything ever that it is possible to play together and we obviously know each other so well so it's so easy for us to go out and and play together on the team we understand what the other person is going to do at any one point um so that just makes life a a a lot easier right we understand each other we understand each other's expectations um we can probably speak to each other in in ways that you probably can't speak to other people (laughs) and let each other let each other know when things aren't going so well so i think i'll i'd put her on on that list as well because I've I've spent so much time um playing with her. So yeah. that's five as well, I think, is it? Yeah, that's five, yeah. So yeah, two great lists anyway. So it'd be great if you had them five in each team. It was I'd take them all at any point. Yeah. From team both teamed against each other anyway. Yeah. I look, suppose just on you just want to say you you've obviously had a great career like and you've probably won nearly everything you've ever competed in. So the one thing you left out to complete list is an all Ireland senior championship yeah, career, so hopefully now in the next couple of years maybe you can get there and over the line. So yeah, anyway, look, I'm working what, on it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Hopefully you get there anyway. And look, I want to thank you for joining me there now. And a pleasure so it was to talk to you. And I wish, wish you all the very best of luck not for the year ahead, not just for Tiberi, but obviously with Burgess Dora as well. And hopefully more success will be coming your way. And yes. just before we end up, look, I have to thank everyone listening. And look, follow the Tiberi Komogi, if you want to follow us on, we're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and X, Twitter, X, whichever you like to call it. So make sure, and YouTube us. So make sure to follow us all of that for the latest news from Tiberi Komogi. And once again, look, best of the wishes for the year and thanks for joining us anyway.